Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the exciting world of smart home technology with a closer look at a nifty little PIR sensor that has it all. The AOTech Multisensor 7. Boasting the latest 7th generation Z-Wave Plus communication protocol that affords it a super long range of up to 150 meters in ideal conditions. We'll chat about what you get in the box, its amazing sensors, integrated into Home Assistant, and the cool stuff it exposes in Home Assistant. We'll cover a handy tip that you might not be aware of, and then we'll wrap it up with a roundup of if you should buy it, consider it, or skip it. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's get started. In the box, you get the Multisensor 7 itself, which has a height of 1.38 inches and is 1.7 inches square. The front of the unit has a domed light diffuser to help with the motion detection, illuminance and UV sensors. There are vents around the outside of the front to allow for airflow to help make the temperature and humidity sensors accurate. Although this is not a forced airflow as you would find on such devices as air quality sensors, such as the Apollo Air 1, links in the pop-up above. On the back of the unit, you get a solid metal mounting screw, a locking mechanism to keep the inside secure, and a hole for the USB cable if you're planning on using this device mains powered. You also get two quality lithium CR123 batteries. The base mounting, which uses a ball and socket arrangement allowing for 90 degrees of viewing angle, and a 3M sticker for temporary mounting and two screws for permanent mounting. And finally, you get a 1.2 meter USB-A to micro USB cable to allow for mains power, making it one of only two motion sensors that offer this facility as far as I'm aware. All right, let's talk sensors. The AOTech multi-sensor is like the Swiss army knife of the smart home sensors. It's got six different sensors packed into one tiny body. Our first and most important sensor is the motion sensor. This sensor can spot movement at up to 10 meters away, which is best in class, with 120 degrees field of view. Combine this with the fact that the sensor is battery powered for up to two years from the two included commonly available CR123A lithium batteries and has the option for USB powered via the included micro USB cable, giving you the ultimate flexibility in battery powered or mains powered. Our second sensor is for temperature. You can measure temperatures from minus 10 to 50 degrees C with a reported accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Now there are some reports that this is not updating with the temperature readings due to the device being asleep. We'll show you how to configure this to report at a frequency that you determine later in the video. Our third sensor is the humidity and has a reported accuracy of plus or minus 5 degrees. Again, this is reported that it will not be reported while the device is asleep and only sends information through once the device wakes up to report on motion. However, as this device is very configurable, we'll show you later how to change this to the reporting frequency of your choice. The fourth sensor is for luminosity, or lux levels as it's known. It has a range between 0 and 30,000, and unlike a lot of sensors, this one seems to be accurate. Enough to be able to consistently and reliable trigger automations based on the reported levels. Consider that some other sensors that give you subjective readings or low, medium, high, or others that seem to be far off the actual reading and hence hide the sensor value as it's known to be not accurate. Mention no names. Our fifth sensor is ultraviolet light levels. Now this is a highly unusual sensor and one that seems to be ignored. And for us in Australia is a very welcome one. Handy for protecting your furniture from sun damage or just knowing when to slap on the sunscreen. Imagine having an automation that when the sensor detects motion on the back patio, it starts a timer and reminds you to put suntan lotion on if the UV is detected as high. Our sixth and final sensor is for vibration. You can use this as a tamper alert. So if someone tries to mess with your MS7, you'll know it. This feature is essential for security and it can alert you to potential intrusions or tampering with the device itself. On top of the sensors that the AOTech Multi 7 also brings you some additional features. The device was engineered in Germany, so you'll know you're getting a quality product that will last and not break after a short period of time. 
It's running the latest 7th generation of Z-Wave, which will give you up to reported 150 meters of range with signal and be rock solid. And if mains powered, will act as a router and enhance your Z-Wave mesh network. And best of all, the Multi-Sensor 7 comes with the usual double-sided tape and screws, allowing for temporary or permanent mounting, and can also be mounted in a downlight fitting, so you can permanently mount it and avoid having to replace batteries or have unsightly wires hanging down. So I think you'll agree this sensor pretty much has it all. If you want to pick one up, then as a special for our Australian viewers, I'll put a link to a super helpful local supplier called Smart Home, so you can get your Multi 7 sensor super quick for 77 Australian, which is price matched and satisfaction guaranteed. And for the rest of the world, I'll also include the Amazon links. Installation is a breeze by using the technically superior Z-Way protocol. Now, if you don't have this already installed, then go and watch the video in the pop-up above for the installation and configuration of the AOTEC Stick 7, which in my opinion is currently the best Z-Wave stick on the market. There are two methods to add the sensor. I'll walk you through both. Insert the batteries. A nice feature here is that the Multi-Sensor 7 will work on a single battery. Now, why don't other manufacturers do that? Open Home Assistant on your mobile device. Then Devices and Services. Press the blue Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner. Select Add Z-Wave Device. Now press Scan QR Code. Now open the back of the Multi 7 sensor. On the inside cover is a QR code. Scan this. The Multi Sensor 7 will now be added. The other way of adding the sensor can be done through the desktop or the mobile. Open Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings. Devices and Services. Press the blue Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner. Select Add Z-Wave Device. Now open up the back of the Multi-Sensor 7. Press the Action button for one second. The front LED should show a green light. Home Assistant will ask for a device pairing pin code. This is located under the QR code in tiny writing, so look very carefully. Enter the five digit pin code and press Submit. Your device will be interviewed and added to Home Assistant. Now press Close. Scroll down to Z-Wave and select Select the Z-Wave devices. And now you can see that the Multi 7 has been added successfully. Now, if you're not familiar with Z-Wave, here's a handy tip. If you want to remove a Z-Wave device, it's not the same as ZHA. Press the back arrow. Select the devices. Select your Multi Sensor 7. Under normal circumstances for Z-Wave, we would press the three dots next to the configure and we would select Delete. This is not the case for Z-Wave. Select the back arrow and select the back arrow again. Now press Configure. You'll see a selection for removing devices, rebuilding the network routes, or reconfiguring the server. Select Remove Device. Now press Start Exclusion. Now press the Action button inside your Multi 7 sensor. A purple LED will flash on the front of the dome section. Home Assistant will revert back to the removed Z-Wave device screen. Once removed, a blue LED will flash on the dome to signify that it has been removed. Now let's check to see if it's been removed in Home Assistant. Close the window, press the back arrow, and you will now see the number of devices has reduced down to two. Select. Our Multi Sensor 7 is no longer paired to Home Assistant and is available to be repaired. By the way, if you want a table of all those colors that are displayed on the front of the Multi Sensor 7, then these are available in the user guide. Links in the description. Now let's look at the sensors that are exposed by the Multi Sensor 7. Navigate to Settings. Devices and Services. Search for and select Z-Wave. Select the device's hyperlink. Select your Multi Sensor 7 from the Z-Wave integration. You get the already discussed air temperature, humidity, illuminance, motion, and UV index. But you would have noticed I didn't mention the vibration sensor, and that's because out of the box it's not configured. But we'll come back to that later in the video. First, let's tune the temperature and humidity reporting periods. If you remember, the temperature and humidity reporting is every hour due to the device being asleep to save battery. If you want to increase this frequency, then you need to make some changes to the configuration. Remember that more frequent reporting will have an impact on the battery life. Now press the configuration. You'll see a full list of configuration items available to you to tune your device to your specific needs. To set the temperature and humidity reporting to every 10 minutes or every 600 seconds, Scroll down to parameter 111 
for timed reporting group one interval. Change this from 3600 seconds or every hour to 600 seconds or 10 minutes or as required. Now to activate the vibration sensor, scroll up to parameter six. Change this from 255 to one. Note that this configuration value will not update until the device wakes up. So it might be a good idea to trigger that motion event. Now press the back arrow in the top left hand corner. Now there are no obvious vibration sensor entities. Tapping the sensor will result in the vibration room recorded in the logbook and showing up as a notification with an event type of home security. We can still use this information, but we'll need to configure Home Assistant to make this available for reporting and automations. We'll create a helper that we can set based on this notification, and we'll set the helper value via an automation that triggers on this notification. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers. Press the blue Create Helper button in the bottom right hand corner. Scroll down and select Toggle. Give it an appropriate name, such as MS7 Tamper Toggle, and press Create. Now let's create the automation that will trigger based on this notification and set the helper accordingly. Press Settings, Automations and Services. Select the blue button for Create Automation in the bottom right hand corner. Select Create New Automation. Press Add Trigger. Select Device. Search for and select your Multi 7 sensor. In the Type field, type 7. In the Label field, type Home Security. In the Event field, type a 9. Scroll down and press Add Action. In the Search Action field, type Turn On. Select Input Boolean Turn On. Now let's select our Input Boolean. Press Choose Entity. Search for and select the toggle, in my case MS7 Tamper Toggle. Now let's create an action to wait for 30 seconds so that we can display or action this if required with a different automation. Press Add Action. Search for Turn Off. And select Input Boolean Turn Off. Now press Choose Entity. Search for and select your input boolean, in our case MS7 Tamper Toggle. Now press Save. Give it an appropriate name, in our case MS7 Tamper Toggle, and press Save. Now let's test it out. I'll split screen with the automation on the left and our helper on the right. Tapping the Multi Sensor 7 triggers the automation and sets the helper. This will stay in this state for 30 seconds, allowing for other automations to be triggered based on this value then the helper will toggle off. If you want to further tune your Multi Sensor 7, check out the handy PDF guide from the link in the description above, or check out the Z-Wave JS database for a more in-depth look at the information held on the MS7. Links in the description. And there you have it. The AOTech Multi Sensor 7 is a versatile and powerful addition to any smart home. Its array of sensors provide comprehensive data, enabling a wide range of automation possibilities. Whether you're looking to enhance your security, improve your energy efficiency, or simply make your home smarter, the Multi 7 sensor is a fantastic choice. The pros for this sensor are its extensive range of six sensors in one small package, its excellent range of 10 meters, highly configurable, flexible mounting options, the fact it can be battery or mains powered and is a relatively low price. The only potential con I can see is that its vibration sensor can be a little more fiddly to configure than some would be happy with. Also that it's not following the current smart home craze for microwave radar sensors. But do you really need that for an everyday motion sensor? It's a solid thumbs up and a buy it recommendation. Links in the description. Thanks for watching the video and if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more smart home content. And if you have thoughts on the AOTech Multi Sensor 7, drop a comment below. How do you plan to use your Multi Sensor 7 in your setup? I'd love to hear your ideas. See you in the next video.